It is extremely difficult to replicate the actions of human opponents. AI and CPUs can always be exploited, cheesed, or plain outsmarted. Humans have this uncanny ability to be 10 steps ahead of their opponent, and adapt with remarkable speed. Smash Ultimate's competitive meta is easy proof of this. However, CPUs are given the same tools, stages, and options as an average player, so how accurately do their difficulties replicate facing experienced opponents, particularly in Smash Ultimate? I will be testing the ability of each computer level from 1 to 9 and ranking their effectiveness of their techniques. Here are the categories I am ranking them by. I used the same stage, Battlefield, used the same fighter, Wolf, and I fought them all as I would a human player. No engagement confuses CPUs quite easily. I decide not to worry about the fighter because the fighter does not really matter when testing mental forte. I'm not ranking how consistently they win, but how effective they fight. This is very dependent on the average skill of the player too, so I'm ranking the effectiveness on how well the CPU uses said tool for its benefit. Alright, let's start. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. If you are struggling with level 1 or 2 CPUs, you must be a vegetable, a 6 year old, a cigarette butt, or some weird combination of all three. Because they literally just let you hit them. Pretty much. Trying to elicit a response from these two felt like being proud to beat a 4 year old at chess. Level 2 had slight improvements, but nothing giving me any resistance at all. Level 3 CPUs are where they started to display alertness. This is where the average fundamentals start to be displayed, such as shielding, dodging, recovery, and fighting back. Comparing ground movement from CPU 1 to 3, there is a huge difference in coverage. It is nowhere near the average amount of coverage of a human player, but we'll get to that later. I will also mark that CPUs at level 3 also start to wave dash to some degree, not aggressively, but enough to say that it did, so I am marking it. Level 4 CPUs hit the same notes. Ground coverage and fundamentals are slightly increased from before, but not a significant amount. This will always happen every time the CPU level increases. The main thing I noticed was that it started to resist being launched a lot more. Human players do this by using Directional Influence, or DI. It would be much easier to test this if I knew what controller the CPU was using, but it is clearly occurring so I will mark it as effective. This happened a lot earlier than I was expecting in this test. Level 5 CPUs are the same story, but I noticed something odd when facing it. After I used a get up attack, I thought the CPU managed to perform a ledge cancel of all things, but obviously it just teched it at the ledge and the animation did not occur. I will count it though, since these CPUs need all the help they can get. It does seem more aware overall however. Level 6 CPUs marked another change in behavior. In addition to its movement increasing remarkably, its techs were also a lot more effective in combat. Air dodging also became a lot more prevalent when pressured, but I still have yet to see a CPU effectively read a situation. Sometimes it would just walk into my attacks when overwhelmed, but not so much the case for a successor. Level 7 CPUs marked the first effective parry, which is a huge shift from our previous CPU tests. Parrying means that a bit of forethought is beginning to surface in the CPU. It also begins to use ledge options a lot more strategically as well. At this point, the CPU is starting to use its tools more diversely, but still lulls a little bit when met with fierce attacks. Level 8 CPUs marked another huge shift. Grabbing, or boost grabbing, requires a slight bit of offense on the opponent's part. I'm actually shocked that a CPU starts to use its grab effectively this late in the list. It also begins to use short hop a little better too. Overall, more aggressive than its predecessors. Finally, level 9 CPUs take all the knowledge of its parent and uses them more aggressively and more commonly. There was not a huge shift from 8 to 9 as I was initially expecting. It was mainly the speed of its decisions increasing. Also, perfect shields were a lot more common. So, after all that, here are the results from my fights. I fought each CPU about 4 times to get to the results. E equals effective and N equals non-effective. Throughout all of the CPUs, none of them performed a tech chase, a raw aerial reversal, jab lock, dash cancel, pivoted, or shield stops. Counting each square as a value of 1, if a human opponent was as effective at performing everything at the speed of a level 9 CPU, then the level 9 CPU would only represent 29% of that opponent's effectiveness. 24.7% would be a little more accurate due to removing the ledge cancelling stats that I gave it essentially and it did not deserve. But a CPU's ineffectiveness of performing techniques would only be half the issue here. And it has to do with the fundamentals of each CPU. Look at these matches against my two siblings. 
you'll notice a lot more sporadic behavior and more positioning than a CPU would make instantly. The other huge difference is that my brother's stage coverage is incomparably better than a CPU, and his inputs are much more intentional. If you look at how my sister plays, she does not crack when she is not being engaged. She waits very patiently as I move around to find an opening. Both traits highlight what I think separates CPUs from players the most. CPUs will always choose the best option available, but human players are likely to wait or create better options. The amount of options available, of course, depends on the player level, CPU or user. However, if you constantly choose options, there is very likely to be a lack of forethought when fighting an opponent. Humans have the advantage here. What I noticed with the level 9 CPU was how aggressive it was, but it can never chain me into a combo or uncomfortable position. Smash Wiki actually addresses this in their article on AI. Quote, Both a level 1 and a level 9 AI will decide to do something such as input and attack, but the level 1 would almost never do so, waiting for a long time before eventually doing it, while the level 9 almost always will instantly. In this case, using a CPU to replicate standard matchup would be a detriment to your overall performance because you know exactly how the other player would perform. The very act of choosing a difficulty for your opponent would be counterintuitive to your mental development as a player. If you are just learning though, then obviously CPUs aren't harmful. Just keep in mind that humans don't have difficulty settings. If you bring five human players to fight against, they will all be different and they all display inconsistent performance. This is precisely what the amiibo fighter was supposed to address, and in fairness, it did it pretty well. Also, amiibos can act differently whether they learn off a CPU or a player, making their habits more individual, uh, except they don't. This chic amiibo was trained to level 50 on the stage. The player did not touch their controller either for the full 99 minute time limit. Sudden death came around and the player immediately ran off to die before the bombs fell. Since this match was so long and the amiibo technically won, it leveled up. This method was done again and again until the amiibo reached max level. This level 50 amiibo was then put up against other level 50 amiibos that were trained in the traditional way. And it not only put up a good fight, it won! Lockstein and Ganagan's video went on further to say they learned some very specific habits, but it would be easier now to simply add spirits rather than waste all that time training them. If you want more information on what they're talking about, I recommend to check out the video. I will link it below. CPUs are much better training tools, obviously. But if their only use is combo training, odd experiments, and technique practice, do they actually serve any use when replicating a competitive match? I would say no. They can teach you at least how to play the game, and amiibos punish poor playstyle much better than a CPU. But after a while, development as a player can only come from other players. However, when training, they do serve some usefulness. Top Smash players such as Nairo and Mewtwo King use CPUs to practice certain scenarios. One trick in the challenges section that helps me is turning my damage to 300% and setting the CPU level to 5 or above. It helps break some of my more predictable habits like dash attacking too much and I have to consider my options a lot more frequently, otherwise I instantly pay for it. I'm not against CPUs, I think they're fun placeholders and it's fun to do specific stuff with them, but I would never try to simulate a proper match with them. They have a lot of shortcomings and basing combat experience on them develops a lot more bad habits than good ones for me personally. Conducting this experiment revealed the formulaic traits of the CPUs in Ultimate that I always suspected, but never fully understood until now. And I hope this helps newcomers, intermediate players, or anybody that wants to understand CPU and player traits better. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.